Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over the Italian game, which starts out with pawn e4, pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop to c4. A very strong opening from white. Been around for a long time. Not quite as popular as maybe the Rai Lopez with bishop here to b5. But right away, the bishop coming here to c4 attacks this square here on f7, which is a very weak square for black early on, with the king being the only piece that defends it. And considering this pawn right here on e5, usually this pawn would block here on e6, kind of stop that defense. So all in all, this is going to be a very strong attack. White's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on the square. A lot of different variations that you get into actually end up sacrificing this bishop here on f7. So very aggressive move. Black has a lot of different options we're going to go over today, how to kind of approach uh, different styles of play if you want to be more aggressive or more passive. And then talk about some of the traps that you may see from black uh, and make sure that you don't fall for those traps because there are quite a few. The first variation we're going to look at is bishop here to c5, just counterattacking the exact same thing that white is doing. While both sides do have a very central centralized bishop. This is actually somewhat of, of a quiet game. You're not you're really going to see things get too out of hand. Uh, usually you'll see the main line continue with knight to c3, uh, knight to f6, potentially pawn to d3, maybe pawn to d6, castle on the king side for, for both sides of the board. Uh, the, the central board is all kind of clogged up. You may see knight here to d5, maybe sacrifice some material here in the middle of the board. Uh, but all in all, there's not going to be any crazy fireworks that go off in this game. It, again, it's going to be somewhat quiet. Now, white does have some options, doesn't have to go for more of the quiet game. Uh, instead, could go for... Um, uh, a slightly more aggressive opening. He could always try for the Evans Gambit, which is pawn here to b4, giving up material, and then playing pawn here to c3 after the bishop moves back. Doesn't really wear, doesn't matter where it goes, but let's say it comes back here to uh, a5, uh, then pushing forward with pawn here to d4, trying to break up uh, the center of the board right here is going to be a very, very aggressive move. Another move that you could see, not quite as often, uh, but the Jerome Gambit, uh, and that is after the bishop comes here, to just go ahead and take right away with your bishop here on f7. After the king takes here, uh, then the knight could take here on e5. Uh, after the knight recaptures, then the queen up here to h5 check, uh, getting ready to capture material right here. Uh, we do always later have the move pushing forward pawn here to d4. Uh, so this is an aggressive move. I, I don't see that often. I don't recommend it myself. Uh, it's very easy for black to hold on to this since white doesn't have too much material uh, in the game. Now one uh, pretty aggressive move that white can play uh, is the Italian gambit. That is pawn here to d4. Now depending on how black wants to defend this, if he decides he wants to take with this pawn right here, uh, white can always opt for playing pawn here to c3 and then after it takes here, recapturing with the knight here on c3. And this is a variation that you'll see quite often for me. I like to play it uh, giving up some extra material, especially a pawn to gain a, a big advantage as far as more minor pieces, material advantage in the center of the board. Uh, this also kind of opens the game up a little bit, and I don't like to play kind of a, a closed, boring, non-aggressive game. That's not my style. So uh, playing that pawn to c3, uh, and then after they take, retaking here with our knight here on c3 is something that I like to do quite often. The next variation that we're going to look at is knight to f6. Uh, and there's there's a few options that White has here. One, he can continue with kind of the quiet game, which is a, a lot of times why people play the Italian game. They don't want to get into anything too crazy. Uh, maybe they even want to play for a draw. This can be a very drawish game. Uh, so they could just play knight here to c3. They could play your, your normal pawn here to d3, getting ready to castle on the king side. Uh, if you want to play a little bit more aggressive, you can play one of my favorite aggressive openings in chess, and that is the fried liver attack. So you have the knight 
knight here to g5. Now your opponent can counter that with the Traxler uh, Gambit, so they have that option as well. So this is, again, going to be a lot of fun to play, uh, and so a lot of times I may play the Italian game uh, just so I can get some games under my belt with the fried liver attack just because it is a lot of fun to play. So you can kind of choose if you like to play more of kind of a slow, uh, methodical game, uh, waiting for move 15 to 17 to kind of break open the center of the board and try something. Then you can play for a little slower type of pawn to d3. You can even castle if you wanted to. Uh, knight here to c3 is more common move early on. Uh, but if you want to be more aggressive, you can always play for the fried liver attack with the knight here to g5. The next variation is bishop here to e7. And this is probably the most passive way that black can actually play. Uh, this is a very, very drawish game. Plays very similar to kind of the old Indian defense, if you're familiar with that. A uh, very sound defense, but not really even trying to do anything. You know, usually the, the bishop here on g7, fi and Kedwin, the bishop on the king side is going to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, bishop here to e7 is not trying to do that at all. One thing white definitely needs to make sure that they do if they come to this position is to be very aggressive. They need to try to gain as much control of the center of the board that they can. Uh, so pushing forward with pawn here to d4 uh, is very, very good. Now, let's say they decide to go ahead and take here on d4. Uh, one thing I, again, like to always do is play pawn here to c3. Again, if they capture, we're going to recapture with our knights. Uh, that's just increasing our development in the center of the board. We have a huge presence with our minor pieces controlling the center of the board. That's going to be good. Even if they don't take here, you could see if they want to continue to play passive uh, pawn here to uh, d6, that's fine. You can now just completely open the game up. Pawn taking here on e5. If they recapture here, uh, you could come up here, take with your queen. They're probably going to take with their bishop to make sure they can still castle on one side of the board. Uh, but this is a lot more open than you know someone playing this bishop here to e e7. This is a little more crazier than they even want to do. And so you could play knight here to c3. Get your bishop involved, castle on the queen side, get a very, very strong attack here. But this allows you some options even if your opponent wants to play pretty passive. Similar to the bishop here to e7, another very passive move they could play is pawn to d6. And you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be playing pawn here to d4, uh, trying to be as aggressive as possible. Uh, this is really just a purely defensive move. So you kind of do hope that they take this material right here. Uh, you can kind of decide if you want to continue with your normal knight here to d4. And if they recapture, you can capture with your queen. Uh, you can always go for after they take here uh, pawn to c3. And if they take, you can recapture here on c3. So you have that option. Always keep that in the back pocket when you're playing uh, this type of opening just because I like to play it quite often and even if they don't take you you still are gonna have a pretty good game you know if they play um, you know the bishop coming out here to uh, g4 common move you can just take this pawn here on d4 you're playing this pawn here on c3 because you expect them to take it you can recapture but if they don't uh, more times than not you can just come up here and take this pawn on d4 and things are gonna be really really good for you now, if you were to play me and you were playing the Italian game and I was the black pieces, I would pretty much always play the Ruzo Gambit. It's pawn here to f5. Plays very similar to the King's Gambit, which is my favorite opening from white. Uh, but it gives me a lot of different options. And a lot of times my opponent will take here on f5. If you're not completely familiar uh, with this opening, for white, my recommendation is that you don't take it. You can just get into a lot of problems after pawn here to uh, e4, uh, forcing the knight to move, bringing up the pawn here to d5, forcing this bishop to move. All of a sudden, you're getting all your pieces involved into the game, the knight here to f6. It can be very, very difficult for white to hold on to this if they're not very, very familiar. So you can study up if you want to. My recommendation is if you ever see pawn to f5, more than likely your opponent is studied up on it and they're, they know how to play the Ruzo Gambit, which is very dangerous, just play pawn here to d3. Uh, this kind of gives them a weird, awkward setup, especially on the king side. Uh, you have a nice central setup with your knight here, your bishop here on c4, uh, still honing down on this f7 square. So you can be pretty passive. Uh, if you want to play a little bit more aggressive, you can always play pawn here to d4, counterattacking the center of the board. Uh, but my recommendation is pawn here to d3, castle on the king side, play knight here to c3. You're going to have a great setup. Uh, there's nothing really that 
black's going to be able to throw at you uh, that's going to make you fall into uh, a bad board state, you're definitely going to be ahead in this board state. The last line that you may see from black is knight to d4. This is the Blackburn Shilling Gambit. Again, one of those things where if you're not too familiar with this opening from white, uh, then I recommend not taking the gambit here on e5 because that's kind of what they want you to do here. Then their play is queen to g5, uh, attacking both this knight here and the pawn here on g2. Uh, white could always take, be pretty crazy with bishop taking here on f7, uh, and then the king to d8. Now white's still going to go down in material. He's either going to lose this this knight uh, or he's going to lose you know, this pawn and potentially some other material, whether it's here on e4 um, or even some other pawns over here. Uh, so I wouldn't even get involved into this if you see this, uh, unless you're super familiar with the Blackburn Shilling Gambit. Instead, I would just take this knight here on d4, uh, force them to recapture here, and then you have options. Uh, you can always play castle on the king side. You could play my favorite, which we've already talked about before, is the pawn here to c3, uh, seeing if they want to take and you recapture capture with your knight here on c3. If they allow you to do this, you're almost never going to lose. You have all the material in the center of the board. Your next move is usually going to be pawn here to d4. Uh, they have really nothing going on. They've given up their central pawn right here. You have both your central pawns. Uh, they've given up their knight, which really kind of counterattacks the center of the board. Uh, so you're doing a great job right now, and you haven't even given up material on board, which a lot of times you'll do with that pawn here to c3 uh, just to gain that extra tempo with your knight here. So again, if you see the Blackburn Shilling, I say just go ahead and take the knight instead of trying to take that material here on e5. So a lot of different variations you can go into the Italian game. Uh, you can decide if you want to be more aggressive or more passive. Uh, some of the variations that we talked about, whether these are the, the Evans Gambit or the Fried Lever Attack or the Traxler Gambit or even the Blackburn Shilling Gambit. Uh, these are all other videos I've created, so you can definitely watch those if you want some more in-depth um, analysis on some of the lines. But Italian game, definitely try it out, especially if you like to play pawn here to e4, which I like to do. It kind of gives you a change of pace from your normal uh, Rai Lopez, bring your bishop here to b5, uh, or for me, the king's gambit with pawn here to f4. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can avoid some of the traps in the Italian game, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.